I'm Dr. Sandy Kramers and one of our uh, team members asked me to make this video for everybody at home and our staff to try to prevent any viral infections, flus, COVID of course, and even common colds. So I wanna just go through some of the things that I've shared with all of you before on my videos and emails and just read through a little bit of what I've posted on my blog. So a lot of the recommendations I'm gonna recommend, a lot of my friends who are surgeons are doing this and we've done, many of us have done this for many years. I have personally done a lot of these things for many years, but they're not CDC approved. There's no prospective randomized controlled study on this. And that's why a lot of doctors don't talk about this and they don't recommend it. And now I think some doctors are a little concerned about even mentioning it because it isn't been proven to be effective, but there is quite a bit of data now that has been published on the in vitro, meaning in the Petri dish effective of some of the treatments I'm going to discuss. And now there's two prospective randomized controlled studies, for instance, with one of my favorites, povidone iodine gargling and COVID-19. So the data is hopefully going to be investigated more with time. As I tell many people, there's really no money in studying salt water gargling or povidone iodine gargling or Listerine gargling even for that matter. So it'll take probably quite a while for this to actually come out as an effective treatment. But I want to go through some basic things. All of this is on my blog and go through the things that we do in our house. So uh, many of you know, I have a lot of kids, so we try to prevent the viruses as much as we can. And we're always str you know, struggling that with that in the winter. So it all starts off with what you do daily. And we all know we've been told many times to wear the mask six feet away, wash your hands before you touch your face. That still applies in our house. We tend to have alcohol pumps right at the front entrance. The kids know to put alcohol as soon as they are about to walk through the door, even before they touch that front doorknob. And then when they get in, I have them wash their hands. And we try to do this every day because you just never know um, who's bringing home what. So that's must do. We're also trying to be a very low carb family, which is sometimes hard because we have a bunch of kids, as you know, um, but we try to emphasize drinking a lot of water. The CDC recommends in men 125 ounces per day in total, including food, but a lot of it is water intake. And for women, 91 ounces. So everybody sees me walking around this uh, in the office and technically I need to drink four of these every single day minimum. So that's kind of what I try to do because the water is just crucial for your immune system to work properly to also not rely on carbohydrates and sugar and you know that kind of thing to fill you up. So highly recommend a lot of water intake. Uh, I mentioned here, of course, things like eating green leafy vegetables. We're a big green leafy vegetable eating family, as should you become as well if you can, which means daily salads. So the way we do it for the kids is we give them the, the Costco bag of kale, you know, a little bit here with some hummus and try to hide it a little bit so until they get used to it or a little bit of dressing. But try to really eat those green leafy vegetables. It's good for your macula. It's good for your eyes, your heart. And especially now with COVID, we know antioxidants in those vegetables are crucial to help your immune system. So now what happens if I start to get sick or one of the kids starts to get sick? Well, I'm obviously we're recommending, you know, exercise and sleeping well. Those are crucial for everybody, especially kids. But if someone starts to get sick or I start to get sick, one of the first things I'll do, or if I'm in the office and we have a patient that has EKC, which is epidemic keratoconjunctivitis, which is an epidemic uh, situation where it can go through the office very quickly. I'll take a little 70% alcohol pad. Um, these are available on Amazon and I'll usually wipe everything, my phone, my pen, the slit lamp, everything I've examined the patient with. Uh, if I'm at all concerned, I've been exposed, I'll wipe my eyelashes with this. It's not pleasant, but it doesn't do any damage. I'll even go in my nose and clean out the nose with 70% alcohol. And I've done this for years because you wanna avoid anything that's a virus. And this has been shown to very much help. Um, so that's the first thing I'll do. And then if I start to feel like I'm getting sick or a stuffy nose or a little bit of aching in my neck or headache, I'll start my zinc. I'm a big proponent of zinc. My favorite is Coldies. I have no stock in this company, but for years we've used this. And zinc is a lozenge. You're supposed to suck it. So it coats your mucous membrane, which tries to decrease the attachment of the virus into the cells of the mucous membrane and prevent it from going into your body. And it does work with COVID as well. So this is what it looks like. I don't have a sample, but that's what I do. Um, during the winter, we know our vitamin D goes down. So I'm a big lover of this. It's almost sugar-free. It's uh, chewable grape flavor my kids love it it's a thousand milligrams we usually will take about three a day they're t delicious you have to be careful not to eat too many the downsides of this it is has sucralose there and sorbitol so it has some things that are not ideal but this is the best one i could find and i've been using this for years so it, you have to be careful you don't just leave it out because the kids will eat the whole thing it's delicious so that's a favorite one of mine 
Uh, the thing that I'll do is if I really start to get sick and I really feel like I'm, I've been exposed to, to the flu or something, I'll do the 70% alcohol. Sometimes I now sometimes have used povidone iodine, which there's another video of how I gargle it. I'll take a Q-tip in the diluted 5% povidone iodine because I'm not allergic to iodine. None of my kids are. And I'll stick it up the nose with either a Q-tip. I've been known to you know insert it. The worst thing that can happen in, with iodine is number one, make sure you don't have an allergy. So do a little patch test, just put some iodine, uh, betadine, it kind of looks like this. There's the brand name betadine. This is the one we use in the office. Uh, either one is fine. It's, as I mentioned before, 10% dilute it. You can put it on your skin, make sure your kid or you don't have an allergy to that. You dilute it with just regular water and then you take a Q-tip and then just clean it inside of the nose. Um, you wanna try to avoid aspirating it. So the only paper I could find that was of concern was a child that was uh, had aspiration pneumonia from povidone iodine, but it was an immunocompromised situation where she, she was about to have surgery. So it's very rare. And I've never had anyone aspirate it in my house. So that works well. 70% alcohol works well. Salt water works well. So half a teaspoon of salt with half a cup of salt, half a cup of water is hypertonic saline. And I know you've seen in my blog, some of you have seen that Japan, the country of Japan has been recommending salt water gargling and going up the nose with the salt water for years. So it has been shown to be helpful against COVID-19. So I'm a big proponent of that now. Personally, I'll probably put a little bit of povidone iodine in just so I know I'm killing everything. And salt water is very safe. There's no risk to, um, I haven't seen any risks of, uh, you know, gut problems, flora problems. So just be aware of that. Uh, we use alcohol sanitizers in our house. We Clorox everything. If somebody's sick, we isolate them. We clean off all the doorknobs, the, anything that person has touched, we put them right into bed, whether it's me or one of the kids, we try to isolate them. And then we put an alcohol uh, pump outside of the door and inside the door. So if I'm going in and out to take care of my son or daughter who's sick, I'll put alcohol in my hand before I touch the doorknob. And then as I'm leaving the room, I'll to put alcohol on that doorknob and anything else I've touched. And I'm the only one, only one person goes into that room. So you're trying to limit the infection. And then the other thing I should mention, just the four things that I've learned over the last few weeks is that povidone iodine can kill COVID. Uh, Listerine can kill COVID. This is not Listerine, but very close. And it has these chemicals in it, which I'll just show you. And so there was a paper that showed that the meth methyl in the Listerine is what kills the COVID, but it also has other negative things, which are not great such as sucralose and saccharin. So that's why people don't recommend uh, Listerine every day uh, for months because it has potential risks of increasing blood pressure in men. There was a study that showed that after two weeks, twice a day, it did that. And a concern of blood sugar issues in, in certain patients as well. So if for COVID, I would use it in a second. If I thought I was getting sick, I would gargle it. I would stick it up my nose. But the things that do work that are very safe is hypertonic saline, Povidone iodine, as long as you not have any allergy to iodine, 70% alcohol, like Bacardi 151, and there's a bunch of other types of uh, very strong alcohols that will work. Um, so gargling it, sticking it up the nose, especially cleaning out that mucous membrane, trying to go as far back as you can without hurting yourself, of course. Uh, in kids, that's hard to do, but whatever you can would help with that. And then, of course, um, Listerine. So those are the things that do work. Even a uh, dentist told me that he's been using colloidal silver. My, my dentist told me this, but I couldn't find any good data on that. So I would stick away from that for just now. So those are the key things I wanted to mention. Uh, the last thing that has been quite interesting recently is quercetin. So a friend of mine told me to buy this. I finally did. Uh, she's not a doctor and I did the research. And so quercetin is something you are not taught in medical school, that's for sure. And so this is basically um, kind of antioxidants and kale capers have very high amounts of quercetin. And so the last time I got sick or started to get sick, I felt I was starting to get sick. I took one of these and my case of one is just me, but I was surprised by it really cleared my stuffy nose. And I was like, well, I don't have allergies at that time of year. So I was kind of impressed, but I would say that there is some data on this. It doesn't seem to do any harm, but this is the one that I got. And then we're using it at home as too, but nobody's gotten sick so far because we're all kind of still not socializing that much. Um, those are the key things I wanted to mention. On my blog are some suggestions in terms of the amount of vitamin C, vitamin A, vitamin D, and so forth. Some of them are from Dr. Shiva Ayudari, who's a PhD friend of mine. And I think they are reasonable, but you should check with your medical doctor before you do any high dose vitamins at all. And we don't do that 
that if we're fine and healthy, we go to the sun. Uh, and then if the winter time is coming, we'll use vitamin D. But think about those antioxidants. If you cannot get them in your diet, if your kids are not eating green and vegetables every day, consider supplementing their diet either with a multivitamin that your doctor recommends or a vitamin C, a vitamin D, um, those kinds of things. Zinc is a little bit more controversial, but I think that uh, the coldies, you probably only need a few of those a day if you're going to use it just to suck on, and then you don't need to add on a multivitamin with zinc. Melatonin is a suggestion to help people sleep well at night. For adults, I recommend that. There's been no studies in kids, so I haven't used it in any of my young children, but my teenagers in college have used it for sure to help them with sleeping. Minimal screen time, so I recommend decrease or no screen time about three to four hours before bed, which in some cases is tough, but we know that can affect your REM sleep. And that's when your immune system is really recuperating. So we highly recommend that. We love to exercise every day. Our office is in a big exercise kick, which I'm very excited about. All of you know I've talked about gluten-free, sugar-free, dairy-free for years. A lot of the staff are starting to do that now and seeing incredible results from things like fasciitis, help being healed in their heel or pain in their joints or weight loss. And so I highly recommend using this time to get into shape, uh, pray and meditate more, you know, those kinds of things. This is a good time for that, especially as we enter winter time. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, my blog is idoc, E-Y-E-D-O-C. Uh, doc, so idoc2020 at blogspot.com. I hope this helps. Thank you.